huge detrimental to to red. I would take a lot of risks to win go from the peak. As I think red is best options it means red to put put up. Yeah, like never never underestimate your your opponent's side. Right? Two of them fall. Then putting it over here for the beach. All right, so today we have the finals one, two, and three matches of the Highlander Summit event. And on the Red Alliance, we have 16099C Overclock and Victory, their partner, 1168A, the first seed. And on the Blue Alliance, we have the sixth seed, 4610C Robot Rev and 2509A Blue Whale Elite. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this match. So, yeah, let's... I see quite interesting things happen in these best in this best of three. Blue actually technically wins all three matches, but Blue gets DQ in the first match. So really showing off the dominance of the lower seed here. But of course, of course, I think that primary reason of why Blue was able to pull ahead so far in all three of these matches is because just because of their auto bonus. I think Blue Alliance here won every single auto in in the elimination so that's quite impressive definitely be watching out for their autos and they're in positions so i want to point out that both of these blue all all four robots are actually in in the bot in the bottom half of the field and guys i got this new annotation tool so yeah you guys definitely want to watch toward till the end there's some very very interesting strategies that these guys play and they're definitely some of the highest level competition uh competitors right now of course i was kind of flaming the <laughs> This uh, 2509 for having a jank robot, but it worked, I guess. So, looking at this, all four robots are actually down here at the bottom of the field. And what that allows them to do is very quickly allows them to dash towards both of these corners, right? They're able to get to the corners very fast. And that just allows early corner control and establishes them into the rest of the match. So, let's see what happens towards at the start of the match here. As they score it up, they're about to start. So, right away, as the match starts, you see them dashing to the, to the to the corners there. But actually, I think this might be a mistake for Red Team. Red Team here opts out to, instead of getting this this almost filled goal, right? This is, has, this is three on it, so they only need three more. And there's two in this corner, so they're able to get five on that already. And there's one right here. So, th that's a that's six. One, right, three, and then, and then that's two more, so that's six. So... They're able to get all through all of these rings in a very short amount of time. Instead, they opt out and try to go for this goal. Instead, I feel like I feel like instead they should have they should have gone grabbing these and gone to the corner here. And I think that's you're gonna be able to see how that turns out for them. It doesn't turn out super good. While the other red alliance is going to it's going to I think they're gonna fight for the fight for the third goal, right? They fight for that third goal. It's looking very good for Red, actually, right now. At the start, they control three goals, but very quickly, Blue finds an opening. As I think, I think Victory here dashes too far away. Victory is goes very far to get some more, try to get some more rings. And this leaves a huge opening here. A wide gap for Blue to just come in and grab that goal. Right? That that's Red's most filled goal right now. They don't have a single ring on any other goal. So this is three rings. This is where this is where all of Red's points is right now. So blue is gonna be able to take that, and that's a that's a huge detrimental to to red, right? And blue is able to uh, fill rings on on that and cancel red's points out. While while both red teams are are fighting to to get back into the in, into the game, right? They're both trying to fill up their goals, but you you you'll soon notice that that red makes this mistake in pretty much every single finals match. Blue is able to steal that steal a goal away, although red's able to usually capitalize. And have three goal control or through three goals in their control at the start. Blue is going to be able to take that third goal away from them and properly defend that. So we'll go back a little bit and see how see how blue is going to play this play this uh like play the start of the match perfectly. So their teammate is is in the corner right away, right? Of course, you want to establish corner control. So their teammate gets to the corner fast, faster than red and. You know, that's what I was saying that Red should have done. They should have gotten these six and just filled this goal up and sat in the corner, right? While their teammate does their thing. Because Blue, that, that's exactly what Blue's doing, right? They're like, we're going to fill this goal up. And and that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to fill the goal up. Oh, this is kind of slow, but it doesn't mean that, that I mean, it's bad. Of course, because Red's really not doing that much here.
And I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's not like, it's not super unsafe for Blue to, to have those two goals, like one of them not really protected just because just Red just doesn't, Red, both of the Red, Red Bolt robots has a full goal already. And by the time that, that Victory has this goal in the corner, Blue already is protecting both of these goals and they have a third goal coming up. So, yeah. I feel like Red overall definitely had better robots, but Blue just had a better auto and better strategies in this match. Not kind of won them the match here. And another thing is, I was saying is, hey, if you're if you're down, right? If you know you lost the auto, you you need to play more aggressive. You need to take risks. You need to take a lot of risks to win because the auto bonus is so it's so much. And I think and I think you know, I definitely think Victory is is you know onto this, right? They're like, hey. We gotta flip that goal over. We gotta start doing wall stakes, but I don't think wall stakes is enough. Or at least I think they started too too late. There's 43 seconds left, right? And they haven't scored any walls. Uh, they've scored one, right? So it's like, this is kind of late. If they did this a minute 15, then yeah, this uh, they can probably win this match. But 40 seconds left, they should be going for a negative corner play instead, right? You want to basically know how much time you have left and just how many points you can score in that time, right? And and that, that that's what they tried to go for, but but blue quickly pushes them away. I think victory should just kept push, pushing there. If they kept pushing, this one would have gone. If they kept pushing, then maybe this one would have gone out, and then they would have been able to get the the filler the more the goal was more filled out. But maybe that's maybe the judges will count that as legal. I don't, I'm not too sure. Some judges have are more lenient than others, but with the with these positioning of these goals, it's almost impossible to get them out just because. The goals are sitting on top of rings as well. So, I mean, as 15 seconds counts down, victory here was unfortunately n neither able to do wall stakes nor grab a goal. So this is going to end up with a, a pretty uh, catastrophic loss for for the blue for, for the red alliance here. Unless, unless blue DQs, which is exactly what happens here. Blue does DQ. Oh, this is played super, super well. Let me go back to where, where blue gets DQ'd. It was, it was right about here when they when this blue alliance here pushes that goal in. That's where they got DQ'd. So right here, when they push this goal in, technically that was double goal possession. They moved this one out of the way, and then that was was a DQ. And that kind of sounds like BS, but yeah, as long you know if they if they didn't just uh, ran that goal in, if they if they if they dropped that goal from the clamp and then pushed then that wouldn't have been a dq so that's quite it's pretty it's pretty dumb but that's how the rule works anyways starting off with the second match red is in the lead here and you know this is looking not too good for blue because technically they have to win three out of three finals matches but we're gonna see how they do that red again misses their misses that wall stake while blue capitalizes so red's gonna really lose auto for every single match here and you can see once again all four all four bots ending up down here under the half part of the field. This is, these are these are tar uh, these are autos very targeted towards the positive corners down here. And once again, Red's in a good position here. Red's I mean I've seen Red has always been in a very good position uh, after the auto. Right, they have a goal here with three and one, two, three, four. That's four rings that can easily fill that goal up. And I don't think they're going to do that again. You're going to see that they're not going to do that again. They're going to switch with their teammates. And they're going to just make the same mistake again. Right? That That's... They made the same mistake again. Right? This time... They switch. And then there's an opening right here. And blue just comes in and takes that away. Super, super easy for them to take that away. While, while Red try to scavenge and, and come back, right? If you, you definitely don't want your goal that's half filled to be taken away because you're effectively losing so many more points because that goal originally was worth, was it, uh, I think five points? And now, now it's, uh, now Blue has put five points on, on it and, and now it's only worth, it's worth negative points for, for Red. It's worth negative two points for Red. And, and Blue here, Doing great work balancing their their wall stake play 
as well. Scoring two on the wall stake. Red needs to play more aggressive here, definitely. They need to do a, a D score or start playing wall stakes, right? And I think that's what Victory is trying to do here. Although their clamp is it's kind of hard to to make to make it work with their piston ice clamp. I think here's when when he, he should go for, go for that steal because it's open and and they're gonna lose if they if they don't go for, if they don't get this off they're gonna lose. There's pretty much nothing that can be really done. I think he should be switching off his teammates. Let me let's go back a little bit and let's let's take a deeper deeper dive into this uh, section here. As Victor is going for those wall stakes, yeah, blue is blue's blue's open. There's an opening right there. I feel like. What can be done here? They can do like a like a trade off, right? Like, let's see. Let's go back more to where where that goal really is, really is no in no one's control here, right? So I think what could be done here is red plops that goal in the corner. Other red team comes down, plays defense, and they go and grab that goal into the negative corner, right? And I think that would have that would have won them the match. If if I think if they played wall six later as well correctly, but yeah, it's just so hard to make these these second uh, these second plays, and red I think hyper uh, tunnel tunnel visions on those on those wall stakes trying to trying to beat blue at the wall stakes, although blue really isn't playing as as much wall stakes as you know as as I think red is red is opting to here, and and of course. This is a this is a very good play. I definitely think this is an amazing play. This definitely should have won them the match here, but unfortunately, Blue was able to make a, Blue was able to win this still. But if you saw there, Red actually Red actually uses this goal, their red goal right here, to to block Blue, and and also they use the momentum to tip that goal, and they steal the the almost full full Blue goal away, put another Blue ring on that super good play here, and defends it, and at this time. What overclock should do is, as it hits 15 or even 16, he should be going down here, and he should be protecting this goal. And I'm, pr I don't want to say he does that. I'm pretty sure he does that. No, he doesn't do that. Yeah, and and that's what loses them the the, the match here. It's because it's because they were able to flip, flip this goal back over and get it to the negative corner. Yeah, like never never underestimate your your opponents, right? Because right here, this goal is not. At 15 seconds, what Overclock should have done is come and defend for for this goal because this goal this goal is safe. This one's not safe. This goal this goal could still be used against them, and that's exactly what happens here. They were able to untip that goal, and and that's minus five points for Red. You know, although Overclock did. Did get that hang, I'm pretty sure, because they did get knocked off at the by the by the blue lines there. So next we have the finals match. So blue won that match, and finals three very intense for for red and blue here. You know, wh whoever wins this match will be getting a ticket to to worlds. And this is so f so early in the season still. They have these teams have so long, so much time to prepare for worlds. Once again, same same starting positions. One thing I do like to note is that. If you are in a situation where your auto has been failing, please, please make sure to see, look at the stream and see if you can fix it. Because most times, you can probably fix it. Like, we were doing our Elims matches a lot of times last year. We would look at the stream, look at what's wrong, because that's literally a recording for you, right, of your match. Look at the stream, look at what's wrong, tune a constant or two, right, and then win that auto, right? Because I think I think this probably has been happening for, for most of the tournament right with with uh for most of elims with overclocked c's at least they're 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 alliance stake right they're alliance stake not hitting as if they hit that then then they should be winning these autos that the alliance stake was just never hitting and if they just if they just looked at the stream they'd be like hey we can change that right like in after r16 if it didn't hard, hit r16 just run it again in quarterfinals if it didn't hit, hit in quarterfinals then change it for simis then if it hit, didn't hit in semis, it will probably hit in Finals 1. And if it hit in Finals 1, then they would have won this tournament. Or at least been a lot closer to winning. Because because they, technically, they did lose all three all three rounds here. As the match starts, they're going to make the same mistake again. All three rounds. Blue 
has an opening and capitalizes and boom they're going to take that goal away from red this round is not any different from the previous ones blues takes that goal away and now they have three goals that has a bunch of rings on them red needs to play really aggressive here they need to make big plays they need to drop this goal yeah, in the corner quick and go for a steal. But they don't go for a steal though, which is which is not very smart. Here, let me let me let me go back a little bit. Let me show you what's up. They're on they're on good time. Red's red's on pretty good timing here still. Minute twenty I think minute twenty five when they fill up that goal. And an extremely good intake. I don't know if this is uh like intentional, but they grab that second ring and fill that up. That second ring was the red ring, blue on the bottom, and they grab the second ring, fill it up, and right here, they should have be at a minute 17, a minute 16, or even a minute 15. They should be having this go in the corner. This is what red team protects too. And victory should be going for a goal steal instead of instead of switching. Because you know that goal is pretty much filled. There's there's no need of doing that. Uh, and it's not like overclocked can't do that, right? Overclocked has an intake too. They're they're both pretty good teams. So there's no reason of of not switching there because I feel like it's just a amount of trust in your teammates, right? I think we saw this as well in Mall with Ace and and 360X. They definitely learned a lot from that that as well. They just wouldn't give up their goals that they had control over to go for a steal, right? And and same here. Here here actually overclocked and and victory finally finally has that realization where it's like oh we got we got we got to get these points otherwise we're down so much already but it's a little late because earlier earlier they had that chance you know you always have that chance earlier right let's see so minute 15 there's currently two in this corner and they're filling up one so they're gonna have this chance to grab to grab one of these at least right because clearly 25098 isn't in the best position to defend these right now and they're going to take too long. Because if they would have done that swap at 50 or at a minute 15, then they would have had 25 seconds to try to steal one go away from blue. And that's not super hard. 25 seconds is a lot of time. And with any driving mistake, they would have gotten that. Like here, here, it only really took them like three seconds to get into a pretty nice position to take that goal away. And you no, know, imagine if they had 25 more seconds there. They would have taken that goal for sure. But here, and red quickly gives up, unfortunately. Then they go for wall sticks instead, even though there's clearly not enough time. Because blue is in control of how many? One, two, three, four, five. They're in control of five top rings. And top rings is three points each. Red, control of two. Two top rings. That's a five versus two. And blue has auto. So at this point, it's pretty much over for red. So... I guess the takeaway here is just if you're down from auto, make big plays at the start. Make big plays because you kind of have to. Right? And especially here, blue is, blue is kind of kind of smart here, honestly. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but they don't have super filled goals here at all. They didn't leave any super filled goals here. So then if red stole these, then it wouldn't have been a huge diff offset, right? Because if, if they had a filled goal here, then yeah, sure, that would have been like a. A, a pretty big uh, offset if it was a filled goal here that would have been like what like um, it would have been like 12 I don't know probably a bit more than 12 points but then take, put, putting it over here would have been a huge offset but they don't have a filled they don't have filled goals here so you know, even if Red gone for that gone for that steal it wouldn't have done as much so that's kind of another strategy to keep in mind if you're if you're up from auto and you have multiple if you have a lot of goals then it wouldn't be a bad strategy to, you know, not have as many, as many goals, completely filled, or maybe that's wrong. But just take it as you will. And all four teams, isn't going to be able to get the hang here. So, that's pretty cool. I think that's, it's one of the first. I think that's the first, uh, all all robots hanged in in finals, I've seen. Nice.